Good morning. Thank you for coming early. You guys can work on the warm up if you'd like. Um, Mr. Swift, yep. I have a question. Um, was the warm up that we did yesterday, uh, um, uh, was it graded on accuracy or for completion? I, I don't think you guys were able to access the document, were you? No, I mean for the the oh, what is information thing? Yeah. Yeah, the, you could only do it once, but you couldn't retake it. Uh. Right. So it's fine. Don't worry about. It. Because you put it in the grade book already, and it was it's my again. I am new to this system, and my grade book is not what it needs to be right okay. now. And and I apologize if like some students were saying they turned things in, it didn't. You know, they were supposed to be due by the end of yesterday, and they didn't register. There just seems to be a lot of technology issues working on. Just trust that I will take care of you. We'll get through this. We're all learning. Um, so I'm not going to try and penalize people for having difficulties resubmitting something, all these kinds of things. Okay. Um, Thank you. No, no, no worries. Were you guys able to get your work submitted is, is a real question. I had a lot of things emailed to me because people couldn't fit. We had some, I think I'll talk about it when everyone gets here. But basically, the you guys had to copy the Google document out of the presentation, right? Yeah. The way that that de-linked it from Google, so there wasn't a submission tab on it, but it seems- Yeah, there wasn't. Like, but, so how did you end up submitting it? Which one? The- The, um, our device, the, the binary device. Oh, um, yeah, the I didn't submit it. I don't know. I don't know. My partner somehow submitted. She, they shared it with you. I, some, a bunch of people have been able to submit it into the Google assignment, but a bunch of people had to email them to me. And it really, it's really better for me if they can all be in Canvas because all the emails are just like, you know, cat wrangling, trying to find them all. So we'll get this figured out in class. All right. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for asking.
Morning, Rory. Okay, we're making great strides here. Everyone can start working on the warm up. Just missing a couple here. Excuse me, um, do you know sure. what the warm up is? Uh, the warm up should be right in the module. So here, if I go. Back to modules. Oh, you're not sharing your screen? Oh, sorry, here, let me, hang on. Let me get back to, and then I gotta let people in. Uh, share screen. Okay, 10-11, warm up, 10-11. Uh, so uh, you... thank, you. thank you. I also have another question. Sure. Um, the thing we did yesterday with a partner, did only one of us have to turn it in? I've got to check everyone in first. So let me just get this done because I can't do both. And we have a bunch to sort of discuss about adventures of yesterday and what we can do to do better. Wow, we are really doing great. Okay, McGuire. Sing and climb. I thought we had climb. Hi, Alex. Did you get popped out on your own? Is it your internet? Is it the system? Okay, we are all here. That's pretty exciting. Uh, yesterday we had 100% attendance too, and I am so impressed. Thank you, team, and thank you for coming early. Okay, so we're starting out working on the warm up, oh, which is 
what can we communicate using only two symbols? Is there a limit? Um, while you're working on that, let's uh, talk about some things that happened yesterday. The way the lectures are shared with me, everyone teaching computer science, AP computer science principles at Churchill is working off the same lecture. For some reason, there were some sharing settings that were not set properly. So that's why you couldn't access the worksheets through the modules that you were getting that weird Google assignment thing. You could see the worksheet and there was a Google assignment. The file did not post into it. So ideally when you go in the modules today, um, hang on. So when we're looking at our module today, there's gonna be things like the instructions for the flippy do, the flippy do PDF. Uh, this is an important one, binary numbers. So ideally, when you click on this, There's going to be a file in here, but now I am not seeing the file. Can one of you try and open U1LO4 binary numbers? Um, I don't see a file. Right. It, isn't this where you turn it in? It, it isn't, but it is. So, so hang on. Have you been able to, how have you been able to turn in assignments that don't have a submit link on them? Because, because uh, for Google assignments, uh, I don't remember exactly, but you just, for the students, uh, there's like a button of some sort, you click it and then it pops out uh, as a Google assignments page. And then you just, get, and then it allows you to access your Google Drive and just click which uh, files you wanna submit. Okay. A lot of people weren't able to figure that out yesterday, and I am brand new to Google Assignments. I've worked with the Drive before, but never the Google Classroom. So this has been a real problem. Um, I've never used it before either, but it's pretty easy. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. If anybody emailed me their assignment, if they can figure out how to submit it through the Google, the assignment portal, that would be fabulous. Um, but now I'm having the same problem we had before. So I hate to say I'm gonna to need to do the Wizard of Oz and go behind the scenes and see if I can fix this. Uh, hang on. Of course, all these guys are blocking me. Um, edit assignment settings. Email 101, task assessments, external tool. Fine. See, now this has the file attached. Uh, it's because you're using, um, you, know, you have a teacher account. It doesn't let you see the same things as us. Right, but, the, but I'm seeing the file in here, but I'm not seeing it on my page. So my question for you guys is, are you seeing that file? Can you see the worksheet? Um, the, well, it's not being given to us through there. It no. should be. There should be a file in there. When you open it, it should just open to the, to the worksheet. No, it, it, all it does, it, it sends us to the place where you submit the work. Okay, um, hmm. okay, so hang on. Um, so this is it. Wait, what assignment is that? This is, this is what I'm trying, this is where you're supposed to get to. This is the worksheet you need. Um, so hang on, I'm just going. Quickly in here, save. Let's see. It, it says error for us. Well, for me, it said error. 
said error what? Um, I got to the assignment from going to the slide presentation and clicking the link there. I, I understand. Um, that is not, the problem with that is that slide is not editable. And you're yeah, having to make, make a copy, copy of it, yeah. and then it's not linked to Google once you've made a copy of it. So there, is, there isn't that, you know, submit assignment tab, but somehow people seem to make it work. Yeah, um, I just, it, does, it doesn't give us a... When you click it, it just uh, brings you to a submit tab. Okay, no, so, so I'm going to create this. Um, sorry about this. We are going to be behind. Making a copy isn't a big deal. We could continue doing it that way. Well, I think it's going to be easier. Isn't that the Zoom link, not the assignment link? What's that? You pasted the Zoom link there. Oh, is that still in there? Okay, thank you, sorry. Brilliant! I swear I just copied this, but it didn't, did it? All right. Why is Zoom still in there? Link. Well, I'm telling you, this stuff is fighting me. Okay. This is going to bring us to where we had to make a copy. I'm pretty sure this doesn't give us uh, our own copy. This is the link to the actual thing. So as you guys link, you should be able All right, anyway, I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, couldn't find valid settings for this link. That is really annoying. Okay, so we're gonna go the way we did because we've got to get moving. Um, we'll do the same thing. Uh, let me just quickly see if this came through. Not flippy do. Instructions for flippy do binary numbers. Okay. I don't know where that went. I don't think it went through. All right. So is everyone done with the warm up? Okay. Um, one other thing while I'm sharing in modules, uh, everybody does need to sign up with AP. I think it's ap.org. Um, this is instructions for creating a student AP account. It's in your day one. I'll probably send a link to everyone today. Oh, now it's saying my internet's unstable, which can't be good. Uh, this is just the link that you wanna create an AP student account. This takes you to the student, to the AP uh, website. What you need to enter is this join code, 2AWD44. That's gonna sign you up for my class. So everyone needs to do that. Uh, I will try and send something out that's gonna let you see that in an easier way than here. Right now, this is in the bottom of the day one, or is it day two? Come on, guys. It's in the bottom of day two, instructions for creating a student AP account. Okay, so today, 
we are going to explore the wonderful world of binary numbers. We've done our war warm up. Let's, we're going to talk about circle square review. Hang on, let me present. Oh, so we're going to do a little review of the circle square. Then we're going to get into binary numbers. If I know we're a little short on time today, so we're probably not going to get to rounding, but I'm going to want you guys to look through the rounding lecture over the weekend. Uh, AP sign up, check the module for information. I'll put that link in the bottom of today's module uh, and let people know. Uh, uh, today, what is due is the warm up, your circle square patterns, and today's binary numbers worksheet. That's what I was trying to get there. You're, there's also an exit card. So we've got a lot that's due today. Uh, oh, killing myself. Goal, you will be able to determine the value of a binary number to a decimal number uh, and vice versa by using the flippy do. And as I said in our little announcement, the flippy do is a technical term for a fabulous device that's really gonna help us today. Uh, so first off, um, why am I not seeing you? There we are. Uh, how did the circle square patterns go yesterday? Does anyone have questions on the circle square pattern worksheet? I have a question. Okay. So at the bottom, like below where we wrote all 16 possibilities, what do we fill out when it has like the two times two is four and the two times two times two is eight? Like what's that stuff? Don't worry about that. Uh, that's the last thing on the sheet. So just turn it in without doing that? I, let, let me take a quick look. Um, hang on, let me get out of my presence. Marla told me, Marla's the person who created, uh, Miss Rednick, um, that somehow the bottom of that sheet got corrupted. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking you're seeing is strange things that don't make sense. Is that right? Yeah. So here, so here's the challenge patterns. Describe your rules. Challenge more patterns. Now, uh, is yeah. that not what's on your sheet? Uh, ours, it, ours doesn't show that. Doesn't show what? Like, at least mine didn't show, um, like, the 1 through 16. I just had to write it myself. At the bottom, it's like, it's like two times two and then four, and it's like of all the possible abilities, it's okay. like with four so different spots. That's what Marla said. It's a little sad, but it's let, let's just let's talk this through. So don't worry about section three. Apparently, somehow that got corrupted. It's supposed to look like this, but it's just supposed to be blank numbers. You're supposed to put in all your four place values. We're gonna actually go over this today as we're working in binary and stuff, but it's just the idea of what can you do with four place values with your circles and squares. And you're just gonna use that same pattern for building it out that, that you've seen, you know, try and be methodical. The way they seem to do it is they start with all the circles on, on top, then start adding a square, then more squares, and then it sort of reverses and the bottom line ends up being all four squares. Um, so don't worry about that. Does this make sense to you in terms of how you're creating these patterns and what they're gonna mean? That it's that idea of trying to convey information through two, you know, through on and off. In the end, whether it's a circle, a square, or whatever, we're talking about on and off and how a computer sees language. Uh, so that's what we're trying to see here is how these guys fit together. And then as a result of that, how binary actually works. Has anyone worked with binary? Does anyone understand that binary is a base two number system? Yeah. Do you guys understand what base two means? 
-hmm. In base two, there are only two numbers, zero and one. And that's an interesting thing we'll hit. Apparently computer scientists like to start counting at zero, not one. So remember that little trick. So anytime, you know, like in, in, in our decimal number system, when you hit 10, it shifts to the next place. In binary, once you get past zero and one, it's going to shift back to zero. So counting makes it very long. All right, if everyone's okay with the circle square challenge and you're going to be able to turn this in today, is that okay? Is everyone good on that? Does everyone know how to turn in a Google Doc that is not linked to Google? That you're going to turn it in through the drive or through that window in the module. People are saying that window in the module is where you turn it in. Does that make sense to everyone? Please let me know, because I know I have been very frustrated and confused trying to figure this out and answer your questions. All right. Uh, great team spirit. Let's get back to it. We're going for the big bucks. Okay. I don't think anyone's waiting, so I think we got everyone here. All right. Okay, perfect. Uh, no, we've all been having trouble with the internet and having people bounce out of meetings and my meetings not functioning appropriately. So the prompt for our warm up was yesterday you created your own number system using circles and squares. What can we communicate using only two symbols? Is there a limit? Who wants to share out with me, or they can put it in the chat, what their answer is uh, to the warm up? I can start calling. Uh, I Always exciting. How about Ryan? Who's jumping in? Brave soul. Is it you, Dennis? I could nope. do it for the warm up. Sure. I said that um, you can make a system out of two um two things um basically one would have to be you you'd you'd have to um oh, you'd have to start with um like for example circles and squares you'd have to start with all circles and then slowly add squares until everything is squares but with only two can you can only get a max of four a max um, of four what four um sets of symbols so like you can have circle, circle, square, circle, circle, square, and square, square. I'm not. How do you say? Um, that is not okay. Okay, this is this is a this is a fabulous point. I understand exactly what you're saying, Dennis. You're not reading the question properly, and this was somebody else asked me about this uh, with the homework. Uh, they were stuck with the idea that. You know, it was the last eight, you know, how can you represent eight different things uh, with only two symbols, right? Um, they thought it had to relate to their question for that binary system. And they were like, oh, it was gender, but there's only two genders. We can't do that. And I go, well, the good news is you're misreading the question. So what we wanted was for you to use your symbols that you used in that first binary system to try and create eight. And where you're going wrong, you're using two symbols. You are not only using two symbols once or twice. I can put, if my two symbols are a circle and square, I can put a million squares down and a circle. And that's gonna represent something. I can create anything, as far as I know, using just two symbols. The problem is it takes a whole lot of them. You know, if you're gonna try and create an ID for everything in the world using only two symbols, you're gonna have a square that's a couple million wide and a couple million deep with all the variations needed to have a different symbol for every single item in the world. But there's no, the only limit on you is your ability to store those symbols. That storing something with 16 million squares and, and circles in it 
takes some space. Luckily with computers these days, you can do that. But this is the idea that ideally you can create a unique symbol for anything using only two symbols. It might take a lot of them. So you're not just dealing in that four unit world. For us in uh, binary and stuff, we are gonna be dealing with you'll see with the flippy do that we're going to be looking at an eight uh eight byte world uh, eight bit world not eight byte world an eight bit world okay uh does anybody else have an answer for what they thought the answer to this was of course now that i've explained it's probably moot but let's try uh alex pace what was your answer today Alex, are you in there? Yeah, I'm sorry. Going back to Ryan. Oh, there's Alex. Uh, what was your answer for the warm up? Um, I said there. Sorry, I'm trying to get back to it. I said that there are a bunch of different ways that you can do it. Right. So in theory, I believe it's there is an infinite amount of things that you can. It's it's infinite, but it is only restricted by your ability to store all those symbols. But if you're using pen and paper, you're not writing out a million X's and O's. If you have a computer, that allows you to. So you are limited in terms of your storage ability, but there is no limit to being able to create a unique identifier for anything using just two symbols, but it might take a whole lot of them. All right, let's move on from here. Oh. Wrap up. I don't know why it's not behaving. Um, all right. How is counting in the circle and square system similar to how we count in our regular lives? How is it different? Anybody have an answer for that? Uh, I don't want to force anyone because this is a sort of a weird question. Um, can someone take a guess? Just be brave okay. and say whatever you think. Uh, it's okay. similar. Thank you. It's similar because we're still counting and it's still, I guess in theory, if you're using the circles and squares, it's still some sort of a number system, but it's different because there's only two sep there's only two different values. And so you're only oh. reusing those values, whereas our system has nine different or 10 different values. And so it's like our number, we, like you don't have the number 14 in a, um, in like a computer world because it's just it's zeros and ones because they don't have the four right but you could probably represent the number i mean it's not like you can't create 14 on a computer it can still be represented um but that's that's exactly what we're going to be going into today is what com computers and using uh bits you know zeros and ones what are the limitations of that and how does that system work? And like Ryan is saying, it skips, that it's all on powers of two, so there are certain numbers that you can't do. That doesn't mean that you can't represent them. I think what they're trying to get to here is the idea of when we have our symbols, you know, our, our three symbols lined up, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, it's showing you what the, um, decimal numbers are lining up with that it's that there is the squares and circles are just symbols representing that other symbol that we understand a decimal number an arabic numeral that we all understand decimal numbers and i love the the explanation because we have 10 fingers and 10 toes Apparently, if we had 12 fingers and 12 toes, we might have developed a different system. 
But that's, in, that's one of the reasons people attribute the idea that we use a decimal system of 10 is because we are used to counting by tens. Um, let's get into the meat of it because this is where things are gonna start to become clear. So our, our big activity, binary numbers. You should have a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. Um, okay, binary value. You know, so a binary number has one place value and okay, with only one place value, we only have two possible patterns. That is a circle or a square. Uh, I started with a circle, but we could have just as easily started with a square. It's plus and minus on and off. Okay, so there are two place values. Uh, with two place values, we can make two sets of the previous patterns. Then insert circles in front of the first set and squares in front of the second set, and it makes four possible patterns. So let's say we're going to insert circles in front of the first pattern and squares in front of the second pattern, and that makes four possible patterns in that two, but that binary world. And I think that's what, um, I think it was Ryan this morning was explaining that if you're not repeating a pattern or our symbols in a two thing world, you've only got those four choices. Okay. So for three place values, we can make two copies of the two place value patterns. Then just like we did before, so we can make two, two sets of two place values. And then just as before, um, fill in the first set with circles in front and the second with squares in front. This makes eight arrangements. Okay, now we're gonna add the Arabic numbers. Oh. So then we can map our patterns to a numbered list. Note the computer scientists like to start counting at zero. This is actual binary now. This is what zeros and ones. Zero, zero, zero is zero. Zero, zero, one is one. Zero, zero, one, zero is two. That's the basic idea. And see what we were talking about before the idea that these three zeros. Uh, excuse me. Are, yes. Uh, we can only see the presentation. We can't see what you're uh, talking about. How is this not in the presentation? Yeah, we, we, I'm pretty sure we're uh, looking at so, the wrong. Hang on. Uh, Let me, no, no, it's, again, it's a funky technology thing. When I hit present, it pops it out in a new screen. So let me, um, hang on. Let me get out of sharing and see if I can share. Okay. Don't ask me why. So this, let, let me go quickly back through. Come on. There. Why? All right. So this is, this is what we were showing. Um, thank you so much. That, again, I don't understand why they're, these things are behaving differently. Um, so this is one place value, two possible patterns, circle, square, two place values. Uh, this is the, I need my script to catch up with this stuff. Uh, so it, with two place values, we can make two sets of the previous patterns then insert circles in front of the first set and squares in front of the second set. This makes four possible patterns. Uh, so then we're gonna go to eight. So three places, three place values. They're gonna start out for three place values. We take two copies of the two place value patterns. Then just like we did before, we fill in the first set with circles in front of the second set and in the second set with squares in front. So all we did was add four circles and four squares here. Um, 
This makes eight arrangements. Now we're going to see how this maps. So we can map our pattern to a numbered list. Note computer scientists start counting at zero. So now we have our patterns for three, and we have what the Ar Arabian numerals are corresponding to these patterns. This is actually binary. So this is what I was saying. Zero, zero, zero is zero. Zero, zero, one is one. Zero, one, zero is two. Zero, one, one is three. One, zero, zero is four. We'll see this as we get into the rest of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yay, thank you. Thank you for the, the confirmation. Now, okay, instead of two shapes, what if we had 10 shapes? All right. So one place value, 10 one shape patterns. This is the decimal system. Here, these are not numbers. These are shapes. These are just shapes like the circles and squares. They're shapes we are familiar with, but they are just shapes that we are associating with our binary numbers, okay? Does that make sense? We're getting into exciting sort of cognitive things. So, with two places, there's a hundred two-shape patterns, right? But it's going to start at zero. It's not going to be one through a hundred. You're going to have those 10 shapes, and then it's going to fill in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 80. So those are two-shape patterns. But still, those, they are trying to emphasize those are not numbers. Those are two shape patterns, just like a circle and square. Uh, okay, what happens when we count up the last shape? Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. that's bad. Uh, what comes next? 100. I know, I cheated, didn't I? Now, why is that? The two nines are set why back to zero. Why is 100 in, what's that? The two nines are set back to zero and then the one bumps up. Correct. It rolls over to the next decimal place, right? The nines are as high as you can go in a decimal system without going to 10, and once you hit 10, you need to have an extra decimal place, right? So there's gonna be a number to the left of 99 now, indicating that we now have 100 zero tens, zero ones. There's our beautiful 100. Binary is gonna work in the same way, but it's gonna go zero, one, and you're never gonna get to two. It's gonna roll over to this next digit. So you're gonna go zero, you'll say zero here, one, then it's gonna to go to zero, then it's gonna to go to one, then it's gonna to go to zero, then it's gonna to go to one. That's how the numbers roll over in the, in the binary system. That is the difference between being base two and being base 10. Base 10, works in increments of tens. The regular decimal counting system, the idea that you can move a decimal point, you know, if you can turn 10 into one by moving that decimal point one position to the left, it's not this, it is the same in the binary world, but they're much smaller numbers than, there, there are not 10 symbols in there, there are only two symbols in there. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so this is very appropriate for their next title. They understand. This is the question going through your mind. Where is this heading? All right, we are heading to binary. Okay, let me make sure that this is all the way up. Okay.
Okay, binary is a number system with just two shapes. Here we go. So we've got our circle and square. Different symbols. Zero and one. That's the binary world. There's only zero and one. It's very depressing. You never get to two. Uh, so instead of shapes, we use zeros and ones. In this example, each pattern maps to a decimal number from zero to seven. Okay? So this is what I was saying. This is binary on the right here. These are how you represent zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's our finite three-bit system. That's all you can represent. There are eight things. So zero, zero, zero is zero, 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 one. Once you've hit one, it has to roll over to the next digit. So it's zero, one, zero for two. Then you can add a one to this zero for three, for the next one, it ha this has to roll over to make four, so it becomes 100. Then we can add a one, we can move that one to here, and then that zero becomes a one. That's all we can do before we're gonna have to roll over to the next digit to create whatever binary is to represent eight. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay? So this is how code.org works with you in terms of trying to start out with a broader, simpler way of looking at things and slowly build your understanding of what the underpinnings of these systems are so that you can then start to expand your knowledge and make inferences based on your experience. Okay, uh, so for today's big activity, we need to make a flippy do. Uh, did everybody get my message and the idea that I was hoping you could print out your flippy do beforehand? Okay, yeah. I sent a message last night. It should have gone to everyone. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go into the module. Uh, now, hang on. First off, if you go into this lecture, if you don't have access to a printer or anything, um, you can click this button and it's a digital flippy do. Uh, so this shows you how to do, how to do it. That it's the idea that you're gonna drag your zeros and ones. Um, let me get back, oh, hang on. Sharing is paused. Is it not resuming? Okay. Stop share. Oh, I know. I think of, again, never leave Zoom. And so I need to present this. Okay, are you seeing this? No, You're, we're still in. It's view only for us. Okay. And so now let me stop, let me start. This is what I want to be sharing. Okay, so what, if you have paper, if you have the ability to print, uh, if you look in the module, let me just, Check one thing here, see if it is on the next page. No. Okay. If you go back and look in the module, there is a PDF for Flippy Do 4. All right. I hate to say I'm going to get out of this. Uh, okay. I'm going to go back. To here, um, if I look at modules for today's class, 
Here are the, here's that what we're looking at, the instructions for the flippy do, and here's a PDF template that you can use to make your flippy do. Uh, so see, there's the file. That one has the file in it. So this is what you'd want to print, and then we're going to fill it in with the pieces, okay? Um, if you don't have a printer or can't do it, just try gritting out your paper to look like this. You're going to need four columns of one, two, hang on. let me consult. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four columns of eight blocks. And we're going to fill this in. Okay, let me get back to where I'm supposed to be. Present. Okay. Sorry about this. I just don't know how else to get in and out. There, 19. Okay, so this is what we need to do. The Flippy Do is a device that is going to help you understand how binary works and how to, what we're going to spend most of the day doing. Um, so what you're going to do in the top row is you're going to do two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, two to the seventh. Those are the powers of two. Two squared, two cubed, two quadrupled, two quintupled, sextupled, and septupled. I'm proud of myself. Underneath that, you're going to put what that value is. Two to the zero. Can't see your screen. Yeah, we can't see the. Hey, how is it not presenting this? Okay, I'm so sorry. It's just killing me. I swear I just did this to make sure that we were doing it. Hang on here, right? Now, now we can. Are you seeing this change? I think somehow I'm not yeah. presenting. The, we can you see are it seeing that. We can see it. Okay. I'm so sorry. Ah, help. Sorry. I'm just trying to. No, 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 no. Okay, so you need to make yourself a flippy do. That is going to be what's going to help you today. So underneath these powers are what they equal. Two to the zero is one. Two to the first is two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times two times two. Two cubed is eight. Two to the fourth is 16. Two to the fifth is 32. 2 to the 6th is 64, 2 to the 7th is 128. So all you're doing is multiplying each number by 2 as we progress, because that's what base 2 does. Down here, you're going to write down eight zeros. You're going to cut out these little tabs. Hopefully you have scissors. And you're going to put ones on the back side of the tab. Okay, let me stop presenting for a moment and I'm gonna show you my fabulous flippy do. Okay, somebody has one, great work. I cheated and used the template, um, but basically this is what you wanna end up with. You wanna have two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second across the top, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, et cetera, in the middle, and then your zeros. Then you cut the little tabs, and what we're gonna do is you're gonna be able to flip up the tabs to make calculations, to figure out what the base two number being represented is. So, zero, zero, zero. so what would zero be? If we're looking at the flippy do, it doesn't tell you, what if all those numbers on the bottom were zero? 
what decimal number would that be? Zero. Right you are. You get 100 points. Um, so once one comes into it, it's one. One and zero is two. One, one. Uh, no, one, one is two. Here, let's, let's go, let's, let's let the, the course teach. But that's basically how it works. Can you let me know, is it okay that I keep describing what the flippy do is and how it works while you're making your flippy do's? No one's complaining? Yeah. Okay, let me. Each place value represents one bit, a binary digit. A bit can be a zero or one. There's gonna be a vocabulary question at the end. What is a bit? A bit is a binary digit. Okay. Uh, da -da. Your flippy do has eight bits. That's we're supposed to click through animation. Come on. Your flippy do has eight bits, which together make what? Does anyone know what eight bits makes? A byte. Correct. And the byte, the bit and the byte are the foundations of computing. When we say it's a byte, why is that so familiar to you? This is something that you've known about. So one byte, B-Y-T-E, not B-I-T-E. Um, what are the, the, the terms that we use every day when talking about computers and their capacity that includes the word byte? Gigabyte. Gigabyte. Megabyte. Kilobyte. All those things, the byte is a unit of eight bits. So that's what, that's what your flippy do represents one byte, the foundational building block of computing. Okay, so let me know when everyone's got their flippy do in a semi working state. So together, eight place values or bits make up one byte. Since computers represent information digitally, the lowest level components of information are bits. There's nothing smaller than a bit in a computer. So let me read through what we're gonna be doing and then once everyone's ready, we can launch into it. Use your flippy do to try out these six problems. It may be necessary to demonstrate how values can be calculated by flipping up a one for each value required to arrive at the sum of values equal to the decimal number. For example, to convert the decimal number 10, I would flip up a one in the eights position because eight can fit, can fit in 10. Okay, I'm not quite sure about that. So for example, to convert the decimal number 10, I would flip up a one in the eights position because an eight can fit into 10. The next bit on the left, oh, in the, okay. So what they're talking about, the eight position is the two cubed position, okay? So that is what they mean by the eight position, not the eighth byte. I was a little confused. Um, let me make sure. So what we're talking about here is the eight position, the two cubed eight position, that you flip up a one here, and that should be eight. Um, hang on, a one in the eighth position because eight can fit into 10, can fit in 10. The next bit to the left is 16, which is too big. Then I have two left. I flip up a one in the twos position. This gives me the binary number 10, 10, Okay, so again, everything with the flippy do starts on the right-hand side and moves across. 
So we've raised one in the eights position. And if I raise one in the two position, we get 10, 10, which means 10 in decimal. If students are having a difficult time understanding the rules of the system, remind them of the concept of place value and relate to base 10. Okay, so how would you show seven in your flippy do? Can anyone explain that? Um, so you would, um, you would have two to the zero power to the first power and two to the second power. So one plus two plus four. So, so that would be a one in, in each of those first three positions in the yeah. one, the two and the four. Yeah. And you would have a zero everywhere else, everywhere else. Okay. So I think, I think it's going to populate things. So that's how it works. You're adding these things. You're adding one plus two plus four plus zero is one less than eight, right? That makes sense? Uh, so for 20, what would you be doing for 20? You would put up the one for 16 and four. No, I don't think that's going to do it. Uh, oh, hang on. Let me go. Zero, 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 one. Hang on. Here, let's, um, okay, so this, these are the answers. So, oh, okay, I'm sorry, it's, I, I was reading my numbers wrong, silly me, I was reading my numbers from left to right, not right to left. So I believe you are totally correct, right? And again, I am not the world's expert accounting in base two. Um, uh, excuse me. So yes, isn't real binary different? Because I searched up um what twenty is in binary, and it was like one zero one zero zero. That's ten. Uh, it said no, it was twenty. Zero one zero. So we're counting from the right hand side and going in. So for seven, it was exactly what you said. It, or what was said, three ones to represent one, two, and four, and then the eights is a zero. So all that's representing seven are those first four digits. In order to represent 20, it's once you go over um, 15, I believe, you've got to be into the next digit. So as uh, okay. whoever our fabulous person was said, you're gonna have the one up for four, and the one up for 16, and everything else is going to be a zero. So it should read, your flippy do should read zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero. Yeah, I see. I made a mistake on my part. Sorry. No, no, we're all going to be making mistakes here. And I apologize that I am not the world's expert on uh, binary, but with the fabulous help of code.org, we're going to make it through this. So, okay. Now that we understand that we're reading from the right-hand side, you're reading from right to left in binary. That's a real big point that you need to remember. Because normally you would read this 0001. It's 01001. It's just like, it's just like you can line your flippy do up with it and flip the numbers and you should get the right answer, okay? So if I do just that, I line my flippy do up, I use my numbers. What number is that? What decimal number is 
20. Uh, it can't be 20 because 20 is up above and you're looking at the code for it. 18. Is that 18? Wait, did you yeah. say zero, zero? Oh, I thought, okay, my bad. All right. So, like I say, particularly while we're starting out with this, I literally held my flippy do up to my screen and go, okay, there's a zero for the first one, a one for the second, two zeros, and then a one. And then what are the two numbers that the ones are corresponding to? 16 and two. So that would be 18. Let's try this again with uh, that second number. Is that one 31? Uh, let's see. Let me put my math to work. Looks like 31 to me. Okay. Is everyone getting this? If you're not getting it, it's not a problem. This is very new. It's a very different counting system. Is everybody okay with this? Okay, so 18 and 31. Right you are. Okay, let's continue to practice with our own two number bases, decimal and binary. After you finish each of the four parts of the activity guide, I want you to check your work with your partner. Feel free uh, to use your flippy do as, you, as your work. Distribute the activity guide. Okay. So now we're going to the activity guide. Now, the trick is getting this. Um, I think we decided you're going to download it from your presentation, make a copy of that, and then you're going to submit it through that module right through that Google assignment module. That should be where you're submitting it. Um, can someone, else, can a student that has made this work explain it to everyone one more time? Who was able to submit a worksheet yesterday? So um, in the modules, you would click add file and then you can add a file from your docs and then submit it there. It's just like Google Classroom. Right, and it's just that I don't see it that way on my side, so I can't explain it to you. But that's what we're gonna have to do today because that file is not linking properly and I really apologize. Excuse me. When you, so this is slide 22, Flippy Do Activity Guide. Uh, is this our homework or is this a test? No, we're working on this right now. We're supposed to get through this in this class, but we've had such a terrible time that we were, we're getting short on time. Class ends now. Yep, it does. Um, okay, so I'd like you to, I don't know how you're gonna, you need to download, download the activity sheet this is the activity sheet and use your flippy do and do your best to fill this in. Okay. Uh, we're just going to have to pick up next class and go through the binary. All right. So what this is first asking you are binary to decimal. Um, so I think this is, you know, moving the, from what, you know, the digit across, how is that working? Um, I've got to let you go. I apologize, this has taken so long and has been, uh, you know, we haven't made it all the way through. Um, print this out. In theory, this should take you about 20 minutes, a half an hour. So that's fine for, for a homework. Uh, let's say that we need to get this in for Friday. Is that okay? If you want, I could give you through the weekend. Uh, the only other thing that would really help us, uh, if, if you have time over the weekend, is going to be to look, now, hang on, I'm going to need to stop sharing. Okay. My fabulous desktop. Um, uh, look in the module. 
for today. And if you can, not the Flippy Do Pro. That's weird. I thought UL5 was, UL5 should be in here. Okay, well, I'm gonna make sure there, there will be a UL5 uh, lecture piece like binary numbers um, in here. That's what we were supposed to be getting to if we got through our binary. All right, that's it. Um, let's try and get the, uh, the worksheet in for Monday. All right. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thank, thank, you, so you. thank you. I really apologize for all the glitches. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swift? Yes. So when we click on the binary numbers, it, it takes us to the um, Google Assignments page, which is where we can turn it in, but we can't access the document. Right. What I just said is you need to access the document. I mean, I hate to say everyone's left now. You need to access the document through your, the presentation. It's slide 22. Just like we did yesterday, you're going to have to get this slide up. Are you seeing my desktop? Yes. And you're going to click the Flippy Do activity okay. guide, and that's going to take you to the Flippy Do. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and then you're going to need to make a copy of this for yourself, and then you're going to turn that in. Okay. Thank Does you. Does that make sense to everyone? I will try yes. and broadcast this later, but I'm worried that you didn't get my broadcast message today. Just to double check, so we just turn on the binary numbers assignment on my MPS classroom, right? Yes. Okay. Right. right, exactly. So when I go back to modules, this is where uh, binary numbers, UL 104, this is where you're going to turn in that copied doc. And for me, I don't see any way to turn it in, but I think in theory for you, there is a way. Or ideally, you're going to drag and drop it here? Yeah. There's okay. A yeah, yeah, I, There's like a link. Okay, that makes sense to me. Or possibly you're going to drop a URL in there. I think it'll, it'll yeah, it's let good. you know. Okay. All right, thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question about yesterday's sure. activity. For the first activity that we did yesterday, uh, I was like with my group. And it wasn't like allowing me to type, but then after it right. was, and so I still did it, but I don't think it's going to be the like exact same as the rest of my partners, like, mm -hmm. like the stuff, but it's still going to be like relative. So this is the, um, the worksheet for the two byte system, the four byte system, yeah. the eight byte system. Yeah. Okay. Let me write down. The, uh, And like the same thing happened with my other partner, Parker, he, he couldn't even turn it in. So he wanted to turn it like, uh, he wanted us to turn it in from his end too. Okay. Um, if you can get it into the Google, if you can upload it through the, the, the Google assignments, that is going to make my life a hundred percent easier. Okay. I know it was very confusing yesterday because I have about a hundred emails of people's documents that they've sent me. So don't worry. Okay. We're going to make this all work out. I need to get my grading system improved so that I'm able to do what I need to do. Uh, we're going to get the crazy Google assignment thing figured out. And I just really apologize that all this technology that no one's used before, and I've never used Canvas. I've never used Synergy. No, no worries. I mean, I don't mind. I just wanted to tell you that my thing wasn't going to be identical to my partners. Perfect. Not a problem. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a uh, nice one question for the homework. Yep. For the homework that you gave us today, do you want us to like do it in order of numbers, like one, two, three, four, or please do like any number in any order? I would just try and follow the instructions on the sheet. Okay. I haven't read through it. Let me take a quick look. I think it's right here. So it says fill in the binary equivalents for the decimal numbers below. We've started the first three. So yes. Just go in order from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to 30. Okay, thank you. Or 19, because we yeah. started at zero. 
Okay, thank you. I think everything just, just do what makes sense in terms of filling in the sequence. Okay, thank you. Thanks for asking, Alex. Oh, sharing.